Hello, tale tellers. Welcome to Suzuki Book One Piano. We're going to look at the Allegro today, but we can actually look at any piece um, for this particular class because I'm not going to talk you through the notes or anything. Hopefully, um, you can work things out yourself. But I'm going to talk about the importance of giving each bit, each moment, a personality of its own. So when you first start a piece of music, there are several things you should consider. First of all, the overall feeling. What sort of uh, mood has it got? What sort of tune is it? The um, composer's done most of the work for us already. They've written Allegro, which means it's quite, it's a bit nippy, it's quite quick. We've got loads and loads of dots on the first line we've got a repeat so we know this first phrase uh, uh, sort of natural phrase is going to be repeated um like a, an introductory sentence we can look down and we see the dot legato so we're we're going to play this sweetly and it's tricky to play Sweetly quick, or quickly sweetly, or quickly sweet. <laughs> um, but you, it's all about contrast with music. It's always all about contrast. Um, and then uh, the second line, we're coming down. We've got a ritatendo there. So we're going to slow down, become quieter. Um, there's a sign there for that we're going to be quiet. And then we're going to, um, for this rather fabulous uh, chord there, we're going to... We've got a pause on it. And, and then we're back to the general uh, mood, um, which is flighty. I, I think it's flighty. feels flighty to me. A tempo means back to the original tempo. Look at this piece. There's a lot of heavy blackness in the left hand and it that looks how it sounds doesn't it heavy it you've got all these notes piled on you can look at that and you know immediately but just by looking how it's going to sound because it's rather like wearing uh doc martins I think, sort of heavy boots all the way. And then there's some white, uh, whiter chords with, um, uh, what have we got? Um, semi briefs and we've got that pause. The mood would change. It would sit. Um, the note would last. You can hear it and now it's getting quieter. And there's this lovely pause. You can see that just by looking. That's all going to happen. And then it returns in the third section to the initial mood that we had for the first two lines. Uh, the first line, sorry. Well, twice. You play it twice. So the other thing we're going to notice before we've even touched a note is that the first line and the third line look identical and we're going to be playing it three times which we've got a repeat on the, the first line now whether or not um, you play the repeat is uh, is entirely up to you but I recommend you do play them I think it's an opportunity to learn things better and I think it's an opportunity to um, add a bit of flavour and contrast the more notes you've got, the more you can um, be expressive. Um, it's just quite fun, isn't it? Plus, you'll get really good at it. You might have to practice the legato line a little bit more to make up for that. The other thing is, when you come to the end of a piece, you need to breathe, allow the music to breathe as if it's the end, OK? Now, we... we Quite often we have an instruction at the end of the score to go back to the beginning. 
and play to a set point. But this ends where it ends. Um, so as you're coming to that sort of last section, I would uh, definitely get a bit slower and a bit quieter, but marginally, not too much. But you don't want to end on too much of a um, let's get going type of uh, feeling. OK. Now, I'm a digital musician as well as uh, an acoustic player. And I notice when what I do when I use my computer, my digital um, software, I I can put notes in and then I can change the length and the velocity. That's the speed at which the hammer comes down on the piano, for example. Uh, I can make a staccato note a bit longer or a lot longer and turn it into a legato note. Um, I can affect the volume of each note. And actually, it I mean, it takes much longer than playing it, much, much longer than just playing it. Quite often I think, oh, I should just play this, it'd be so much easier. But sometimes it's not convenient, or, or especially with a cello, because it's quite hard to, for me anyway, to in this music room, to record the cello um, well. So quite often I'll do my string section, um, not for my solo cello pieces, but for my, uh, you know, my compositions. I'll do a version uh, on through the software. And what you notice is that each note has all of these factors at my disposal. I haven't had to play them. But there are, you know, maybe 10 or 20 different personalities that I could give this note. And I think what we should be doing when we look at our music is know where we're going, listen to the whole piece over and over again, but then look at each individual note and know where the end of the bar is, the end of the line, the end of the phrase and the end of the piece as we play it, but also inflect as much personality into each single note as is possible and as it deserves, okay? And if you start doing this right at the beginning, you'll find it's much, much easier to learn. So for example, we start on a G, it's in G major, that's quite helpful. Um, and actually we've got a, a G, G major triad on the left and we've got a G on the right. And I'm working with chords and uh, improvising and improvising is um, much, much easier if you use chords and you know your chords. So knowing that this is a G major chord um, is going to, and that this is uh, the, the C chord, is going to put you, it, it's a C inversion, it's going to put you in really good stead to understand uh, where you're going and also to remember. And what remembering, I, I don't agree that you should be memorising all this um, only. I think you should be able to read the music. But what, what memorising, I sort of call it a, like a partial memorising, really. It means you can glance down if you need to, if you want to remind yourself where that F sharp is, for example, because, um, and just know. But, you know, I mean, I don't have to look down at that point, but perhaps... Uh, and there'd be a reason to glance down. And if you're depend totally dependent on the music, you're going to get completely lost. So I sort of call it partial memorising. But, you know, knowing, <clears throat> excuse me, knowing that this is in G major, you know exactly where you're going to start. And, oh, well, look exactly where you're going to finish as well. I mean, it's the same, isn't it? Um, we've just got an octave difference. So... Um, all these little tricks, you know, are uh, really helpful. And we haven't even started yet. We haven't even started learning the piece. So let's pick a note. Um, well, let's pick two. Let's pick uh, the third bar on the right hand, the C. What personality has that got? Well, it's going to kick off a descent okay so we're coming down the scale
And if you know that it's kicking off a descent, it kind of helps you give it a bit of, I know where we go, I know where I'm going with this. I know how I'm going to play this. I know what I'm going to do with it. It's quite interesting, isn't it? Uh, if you pick the A in the final uh, um, bar four, A has got... A, a is kicking off almost a trill, uh, a, a, a series of notes. It's got to be light... It's part of a team. So you play it a bit differently. You think about that. You think it's part of a team, this team of four. It's almost a bit like a trill. So do you see what I mean? Giving each note its personality or and each chord in the left, this heavy... Don't forget the rests. The rests have personalities too. Don't forget the rests, ever, ever, ever. Silence is a rhythm too. Silence is a sound. Silence is the white noise of music. So I think when you sit down to do this yourself, you should, um, you know, pick out notes and think what, where is, what's this personality of this individual note? Of course, when we get to bar five, We're much, sorry, didn't hear that, much uh, calmer. Now, what I want you to do here is uh, watch somebody performing it. Obviously, the, the thing with podcasting is you don't get to see me doing it. But what I'm actually doing is I'm pushing down with my hand, but then I'm lifting my wrists and I'm actually thrusting my body forward to create this, um, I'm sort of lifting, I'm energising, uh, I'm releasing the energy actually from my hand up into my shoulders and uh, so I'm almost breathing, the notes of breathing, I'm giving this personality, I'm lifting my body as I play Ooh, and so on and so forth. So, you know, watch somebody doing it, go, to, go onto YouTube, watch somebody doing it, watch a professional pianist uh, what they do with this. Um, remember to treat the start of the bar differently to how you treat the end of the bar because these notes have different functions. The start of the bar is very important. It has a very slight accent on it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Because that's what rhythm is. That's what tempo is all about. Okay? So, what else with this piece? We're loud. So we're loud. Um, the, there's no instruction to be quieter on the Dolce Legato line. So, be careful that you... I mean, art, you know, it's, um, it's uh, subjective, isn't it? Um, you're playing it differently. It's, it, sometimes you can sound quieter, even if you're not. It's quite interesting that that can happen. Um, it's quite difficult on a digital piano to, to get um, really good contrast in volume. But there are sort of ways around it. Um, and as you come into that writ at the end of the middle line... Um, again, think about this cascade of notes, this G, E, D, B, A, and really hold it and let your body swing into it. And back to our original mood. Okay? I think that's all you need to know about this piece for now, I'm going to pop up a recording of it, a vapor punk. Uh, should we get should we get cuddles to do it today? I think we'll get cuddles to do it. I'll put that on a separate broadcast with a little bit of um, indication um, about uh, being calm and 
um, re you know, really enjoying it. I mean, this is one of those pieces that you cannot play if you're feeling miserable or if you're feeling, uh, we don't want it like this. We don't want it aggressive. I, I think really, you know, you, you need to work on playing it loudly, but not like a, a, you've got two wooden hammers on, on it, your fingers, you know, um, it, that's difficult. You you know you've got to play around, and it does depend actually a lot on on the piano that you have. If you've got um, a, a very basic keyboard, you know it's going to be very very hard for you to create all these um, wonderful contrasting moods and uh, sensibilities. Um, I mean, I've got a hybrid here. It's a hybrid uh, stage piano inside. A, a baby grand with all the strings so I do get some resonance um, but it's not nearly um, the same as a, a, an acoustic piano so we are a bit you know we're somewhat limited to our equipment and if, of course you know if you're here and all you have is a little pink piano children's piano with two octaves that you won't be able to have as much uh, uh, de definition or, or sensuality, I suppose, to to the piece. But you can still do stuff. You can still do a lot of stuff. Um, and you can certainly move. Um, and I, I recommend a little bit of movement. Not too much. But, you know, it's very bad for musicians to stay in the same position over and over again, doing the same thing. You'll get RSI very quickly. You'll be riddled with arthritis by the time you're 40 and your musical career will be over. So um, keep moving and stop every 20 minutes uh, to have some, some refreshment and maybe do a little stretch. and Look out the window and uh, think how wonderful life is because you play music. So that's that's that class um, over and done with. Um, I think you could probably do the preparatory left hand study. Should we have a look? It's just the chords. Okay, nice. Like boots, Doc Martin boot chords, I'm going to call those. So there we go. We'll have a look at the musette uh, tomorrow um, or the next day, sometime over the weekend. And I'll pop the musette. If I haven't already, I'll get one of my robots to do it. Maybe we'll get Momo and the flies to do it because I quite like them. So my lovely little tale tellers, I really do hope you enjoyed that piano class. And it was a total pleasure for me to um, be part of your musical advancement and... Um, Enjoy. Above all, enjoy. If you don't like it, pick another instrument. There's plenty to choose from. <laughs>